Okay, cool. I'm trying to get you on this this device. Okay, so uh, are you excited, man? I'm excited, brother. I'm excited. I had a great meditation session this morning. Um, had a good writing session last night in my journal, so I'm ready. All right, cool. So let's jam on this. So I got your I got your kind of your rough outline, and um, I think it looks good, man. The question that I wanted to ask you is, you know. Is the first thing you want to talk about this idea that, you know, the is this are the statistics the first thing that you want to lead with? You know, I think that once you start talking in numbers right away, you kind of lose the human the human piece of it all. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I I actually wouldn't. I, I want to I want to think about how we can make this intro um, more impactful than just giving a bunch of numbers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So here's what I thought, and I just had like different ideas as you know between last night and this morning. Uh, I agree. I just kind of wanted to put it on there so that um, you know, so that we we had it for reference. But here's what the way I wanted to start. I wanted to kind of step up on stage and thank them for you know obviously having me there. Yep. Um, and then maybe just going back to something that you said would be an intriguing way to start and say, thank you for being, thank you for allowing me to be here. I'm honored to to speak to you all today. Um, but I'm a little bit conflicted, to be honest with you, because we're here and I'm part of this celebration for Hispanic Heritage Month. But I wonder if without this celebration and this initiative that you all took, uh, you know, initiated, would I be here? Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, kind of starting with that and saying, here's why, right? And then just kind of going into a quick story of, I'm, though I'm thrilled to be here, here's what I think we can be doing to celebrate our culture and to honor our contributions and all of that in a, on, a, on a much grander scale. You know, kind of, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm kind of fighting through the words as I'm spitballing here, but mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that's, that's the thing you want to come out and say first? I was thinking that, yeah, maybe establishing the, my, my awareness that though I'm here to celebrate a particular cause, I'm also conflicted by that same cause. That's that's cool. I like that. And then I think that the next part, and I don't know if you want to do this part first or that part first, but I think the next part is, you know, that 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 comment contrarian, I like it, but you have to make sure that you go contrarian and then engage. So I think the next right away. the right next away. statement, bro, either yeah. you either do this first or this after the the Hispanic Heritage Month is do you know what I see when I look into this audience? Because they're going to think that you're about to say something that's like, you know, that's, that's also contrarian. And then I think that you, that you hit them with it and you say, I see one, two, five, fifty, hundred, however many people are in the audience. I see every single one of you as, and maybe, maybe you even engage them. And maybe you say, what do you think I see when I look at you? And let them all, maybe this is a good way to get them involved right away. And you yeah. and let them kind of jam and say, <clears throat> you know, a leader, or I see a white person, or I see a Latino, or I see whatever. Let them let them kind of spitball, because what I can almost guarantee you is that not one person in the audience will answer cultural influencer, and if they do, that's fine. But I would try to cut it before they have the. You know, I would hear three or four answers. Hopefully none of them are cultural influencer. And then I would say, here's what I see. I see a hundred cultural influencers, right? Yeah. Raise your hand if you think of yourself as a cultural influencer. And yeah, that, that's, I was gonna say that, like I wanted to do like a raise of hand engagement right away and posing a question and this is perfect for that, yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, cultural influencer. And, and, then, and then maybe it makes sense to get into the numbers, right? Which is, yeah. you know, um, you know, so, so I think that you're right, man. I think that you start out by saying, listen, uh, I'm honored to be here. At the same time, I'm, 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 I'm conflicted to be here because I wonder to myself if I would be standing in front of you as a Latino, I would be standing in front of you as, as, as a, you know, a leader had it not been for this month that we've invented. That being said, um, you know, you, and, and actually, Jay, that's a nice little tie-in because the fact that somebody decided that there should be a Hispanic Heritage Month shows the influence. Do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's actually very congruent with the messaging of the whole day 
which is somebody decided that this should be a thing. And so that because of that, I am here. And because of that, I'm going to empower all of you to be better leaders. So that's kind of like the, the, like the overarching messaging. Um, and, and so then I would, I would hit them with, you know, I wonder if we would all be here today, if I would be here today speaking to you if there wasn't this month. What if this was a thing that was just embedded in our society as normal? that there could be Latino leadership invited, that there could be Latino leadership in one area. And let me ask you guys a question as we start. What do you think I see when I look at every single one of you sitting in this seat in front of me? And then let that, and then be like, scream it out, give it to me. And then they'll say, ba 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 And then at some point you say, you know what I see? I see a hundred cultural influencers. And let me let tell me, you. Let's pause there. Let's yep, pause there for yep, a second. Yep. I'm just taking notes. Yep. So I'm just writing bullet points. So intro is thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. I'm honored to be here to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, but I'm a bit conflicted. I wonder if I would be here were it not for this uh, fabricated. What's the wording? So so for this uh, month that was created, that was created for the celebration of our culture. Um, but let me pause there and ask you. What do you all see here today? So I would I would do it a, even like, a, I, would, I would I would I would even do it a little differently, Jay. I would even I would say something like I'm equally uh, uh, as honored as I am conflicted to be here today. Okay. Right? Yeah. I'm equally as honored as I am conflicted because while I am honored that you would consider that you would invite me to come in and speak to a, a group of leaders, I'm equally conflicted and wondering if someone hadn't created this thing that we call Hispanic Heritage Month would we all be together right now right and yeah. and and so as as i was thinking about what i should say today to bring you guys the most amount of value i started thinking about who exactly will i be speaking to who are in these seats in front of me who are filling these seats in front of me so let me start by asking you guys a question from my eyes what do you think i see when i look at every single one of you and then let them answer. Who do you think I see? And then literally scream it out at me. And then they say, uh, you know, the future or leaders or uh, Latinos or whatever. Let them scream things out. And then you say, I actually see 100 cultural influencers. And, cool. and, 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 and then boom, and then you get right into it, right? And this is, where, this is actually a pretty cool tie into the numbers, which is, let me tell you what that cultural influence looks like today, and then let me tell you about my vision and the reason that I do my work about what that cultural influence should look like in the very near future. Okay, let's, let's pause. I'm just writing all these down. Yeah. I, I see X number of cultural influencers. Yep. And then, so I got everything up until that part. So then how did you, how did you transition to the numbers? And then I would say, so let me tell you what that cultural influence looks like today. And then let me tell you about why I do the work that I do and how that work is going to play out influencing culture in the near future. Okay. Right? Because this is what we talked about yesterday. This is where we start to set you up as an industry leader. This is where we start to set you up yeah. as an influencer yourself. Because so today the influence looks like, you know, we're thirty percent of the population by twenty sixty. We've inge we've put one point four trillion dollars into the U.S. economy, right? And it's yeah. and it's very similar to what you have written here, which is then we transition into. But what does that mean for culture? Right. Right. What does that mean for culture? And what does that mean for every single one of you and the opportunity that you have as hiring managers, as someone who's a part of a ma major content distribution channel. What does that mean for every single one of you and why is it so damn exciting that you're not only in this room, but that you have the job that you have? Well, let me tell you about my cultural journey and the work that I do to influence, right? And this is where it gets real important that you hit these points, that, that influence companies, corporations, organizations, and universities around the role of culture in, in corporate America, in uh, organizations. It, like, you know, like that is your, that's your bread and butter. You teach culture, especially like a unique culture of, 
you know, where you come from, diversity, Latinos, right? Like that is something that every company wants more of. And that's where you, that's where you can shine. Perfect. So here's also something that I'd like, I don't remember. I'm looking through, um, trying to listen at the same time as I'm reading through the, uh, the, uh, the outline, but yep. I, I want to make sure that I include here the, and I'm going to paraphrase, the fact that identity, them taking a closer look at who they are, yep. is, is hand, it's, it's, it's part and parcel of culture. It's, it's actually the same thing, it goes hand in hand, as them understanding this culture and then combining that and bringing that full thing, right? to their everyday roles at HBO. How do I touch on that and where? Well, I, I like that. <clears throat> and I think that you, that, that I would just say it like that, right? So, you know, my goal today is, is, is basically to help every single one of you promote culture by promoting culture, both internally you know, it, you know, culture starts with yourself, like understanding what is your culture, identifying what does that culture sound like for you, and then instilling that same confidence in the people that you work with or the content that you represent or, um, you know, whatever that might look like in, you, in your specific case as a professional. Does that make sense? Yes. So in order to really influence culture, you have to understand your identity, right? And I think that that's an important part and how you how you recognize your identity is by 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 really tapping into who you are and why you do the work that you do um but but then but then figuring out different th themes throughout so so then when once you basically identify what that culture is for yourself then you can do it for other people here's how it looks for me right and and this is where you get to kind of talk about i you know, I feel like I have a great job. I feel like I have a, the best job in the world. I created this platform, this media company called The Lives of Men. And what we basically do, and this is where you need to kind of tell them who you are. Yeah. Because um, otherwise it's going to be like, wait, so who are you? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think that this is a good point for you to say, here's basically the three pillars of what we do. Right? We create really solid content that, you know, promotes... Um, promote, you know, and this is, you know how to talk about what you do, but it's one, yeah. two, three. And number three, I think has to be number three because then you go to the talk itself. And number three is simply, and we advise and consult companies like yours, right? And this, like you need to be selling your services without selling your services during the entire speech. So, Back. so, so like, you know, what we do is, we help companies like yours identify the culture that is already living within it and how we can empower and how it can become more empowered to continue. How to we can activate it. Exactly. How we can activate it to actually influence the world that we want to see in the future. And you're all sitting in these seats because you want to see a different, maybe a different world than you see now, or you want to elevate and amplify the world that you already see and you're uniquely positioned to do it. But, maybe you want to know how to become more culturally relevant and how to have that cultural relevance infiltrate your teams, right? I think okay, that's so your sweet spot, spot Jay. Yeah. Now, I was just going to say that's, that's, that's perfect. I just want to break it down into smaller pieces so that I can kind of um, digest it a little bit more. Yep. Um, in, in that story, I'd like to, because part of what they asked me to do is to talk about, obviously, my journey, but I, I think a, an important part of my journey has been the realization that credentials are one thing and there are a dime a dozen, but what really adds value, right, going back to that word value, is how you leverage your identity and who you are, which includes culture, and combine that with your credentials, whether it's an MBA or law degree, to bring to add value to an organization. And I want to really drive the point home and say that's why everybody in this room is here in this room. Not because you have a law degree, an MBA, or, or a bachelor's degree in communications. You're here because you've effectively packaged that with who you are as an individual, mm -hmm. and HBO has seen value in that, and that's why you're sitting in this seat. That's nice. And that ties into the message that I'm, um, that I'm espousing. Mm -hmm. I love that, bro. That, that's, that's nice. And so, you know, you can do that by saying, and, and you know, 
I would give I would give that right. I would give the lives of men three pillars, and then I would say and we and you know today I really wanted to focus on the third pillar that I that you know we do around the country, which is teaching people and organizations how to amplify and integrate their thing. I mean, if you think about it this way, guys, and then that's when you get it, and then that's the transition into what you just said to me. Every single one of you is sitting here today because you are a culturally relevant person. And every single one of you has found a way to leverage that cultural relevance and that identity, all the things that made you you way beyond a piece of paper, right? And HBO saw value in that. Now the question becomes, how do you use that identity to influence the people that are working for you and thus everyone that, that creates your content in the future and thus the distribution that happens around that content and thus the world? Okay, let me, let, those, are, those are key points. Let me just make sure I write those down. So I'm at, so after the TLO and Pillars, I kind of go give them a quick 30-second pitch on that. Um, Here's what this. I would take. I would take. I would take my time with that. I wouldn't do it as thirty seconds. I would. I would. I would. I would do a minute to two minutes. Right. We talk. We we create content. We interview some of the best leaders in the world that are doing cool things. Uh, number two, we. Um, ba 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 ba. Number three, and and most relevant to every single one of you sitting in the room, we and take your time. Do a thirty to forty-five to sixty-second bit there about how you advise around being culturally relevant and influential. Okay, so after I do that, then I transition. My transition statement is: Here's what I mean, guys. And then you said something about. I would say just. Oh, okay. I would say just think about what this means for you guys. Every single one of you sitting in this seat, you are here today, sitting in the seat as an employee at HBO because every sing HBO saw something in you that goes way beyond the piece of paper. Because every single one of you has found a way to incorporate and elevate your cultural identity to make you the person that you are today and to do that that you know and to do that in a way that made you a, attractive to one of the most relevant and popular cultural you know distribution channels that exist that is that is literally changing the world of how people perceive the world so how do we get you to first of all identify, and, and maybe some of you that are sitting here actually haven't even thought about this, and that would make me really happy, right? If that because that's what you know, and and then if you have thought about it, let's figure out how we can help you guys influence the people that you manage, because that's going to influence the content that gets made, and that's going to influence you know that influences where it gets distributed, how it gets consumed, and that influences how the world works. Right, like right. you have to make these guys feel like they are on top of the world in terms of cultural influence. That is your yeah. job t tomorrow or th whatever Thursday or right. Friday. So, like that's what you have to do, and th so you have to connect real hardcore with every single person that's sitting down in that audience. Yeah, yeah. So let so like say like tap into that right now. What is your story? I'm about to tell you mine. And this is a perfect transition, Jay. I'm about to tell you mine. And the only reason I'm about to tell you mine is that while I'm taking you through my journey, I, I don't even care if you listen to a word I say. I just hope that things that I say trigger your thought processes and trigger something in your mind that connects you to your identity. That's the whole reason that I'm here. It's not even about my story. It's about using my story as a mirror for your story so you can figure out how to properly lead. So do I just come out and say that so that's why I'm here? Yep, that, that's why I'm here. I'm here to show you that when you can connect with your cultural identity, then you can actually create real massive change. And that's why I started Lives of Men. And I want to know what your Lives of Men is. You don't have to start yeah. a company to be a cultural influencer. That's the message for these people because none of them have started companies. They're all employees. But you need to make them feel like cultural influencers. Yeah. So my that's why I'm here. My job is to help is to share my story to give you an example of how you can leverage culture and identity to create meaningful change or to affect meaningful change, whether you're starting your own business or whether you're climbing up the corporate ladder at HBO, this is what it looks like. And the bigger, my bigger hope, correct, yes, but the most important thing here, Jay, 
is my bigger hope for all of you is that as I'm telling my story, it just serves as a mirror so you can start to tap into that identity. What is your identity? I don't even care if you listen to my story. If you want to use my story and daydream and go back into your cult, most culturally relevant moments, what makes you you, then my talk today has been a success. This is not about Jason Rosario. This is about you. So my bigger hope for you is that as I tell my story, as I tell my story, um, it inspires you to... Do you connect with your own identity? Yeah, it inspires you to connect with your own story yep. and your own identity. Yep. Okay. That's a great way to end it, probably. Well, and then, and then you go through your story, right? You yeah. say, listen... We're living in th through some very interesting culture, uh, some very interesting political times. Um, you know, you know, w there's this there's this dichotomy. Just as I was equally honored as I am conflicted, it the same thing is happening. Like I am a representation of culture. The same thing is happening in the world. I'm equally as proud of Luis Fonsi for having the song Despacito as I am confused at the fact that you know the, it's being a, that that culture is being appropriated by Justin Bieber, and and it, and and I don't even I don't even think that you make judgments about it, right? It's not it's not good or bad. It's just what's happening right now. Right? right, right. So, so Puerto Rico has got this stuff happening, and then the president is jump shooting paper towels. Like there are things that are happening right now in in culture that are clearly, um, you know, so clearly obvious that culture is being you know appropriated. So our job is to play within that landscape and to create what we want. And here's kind of my story as to how I've been able to do that. And then you tell your story, single parent, immigrant household, inner city. You know, you played at the highest levels of the of career. Then you then you know then you left your business to launch, you know, the men of color, uh, 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 empower men of color through lives of men, and 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 then you know you tell that story, and then you have to you know think about one or two or three different pillars that you want to hit so that they can think about it. So even if I'm not from the South Bronx or even if I had a two parent household, I'm still connecting with you. Yeah. Yeah. So then let's just take it from the top really quick. I have my intro. I'm gonna just kind of give you major bullet points and tell me if I'm on the right path. Yep. I'm gonna rewrite all of this. So uh, intro, so thank you for allowing me to be here today. I'm equally honored as I am conflicted to be here to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month because, uh, well, because, you know, obviously, would I be here if it wasn't for someone having created this at some point? Um, but, hold on, let me see. Back to my notes. So as I thought about who I would address today, um, I thought about who would, thought about who I would address today, uh, I wondered who I would see in the audience. So by a show of hands or just kind of shout it out me, who do you see in the audience today? And kind of just do that exercise. Yep. And then just say, you know what I see? I see all of those things, but more importantly, I see X, 150, 75 yep. cultural influencers. Yep. And let me tell you how that influence looks today and how it's going to look going forward. Yep, good. And then you go numbers, and right. then you so go... Numbers, yep. Yeah. Hold on. Let me, uh, numbers... So numbers with the demo info. Yep. And, okay. then, and then going forward, it's how do we navigate this world of, appro of, of appropriation, really? I mean, that, that is, uh, the more I'm thinking about it, it's almost like that is the game, right? Like yeah. Justin Bieber and, and Luis Fonsi. Um, uh, there's going to be more of that. C Latino content being created on each platforms like HBO. There's going to be more of that. And basically what all of this comes down to, guys, is identity, right? And what, what is your identity? And how has your identity played a role in cultural influence? Because if you think about it, you're all sitting in these seats today because you have been able to leverage your identity. What made you you aside from an MBA or starting your own business or a law degree or a bachelor's degree in communications? Why you're here and why HBO has found you relevant is because you have a story 
and you have cultural relevance and you've been able to package that in a way that matters. Maybe you haven't even identified how important your identity is to you and maybe you haven't identified how important identity is to shaping culture, but it's super important and my whole job with the lives of men is to be basically help people tap into that identity, whether it's individual entrepreneurs, college students, or executives and managers at companies. Here are the, here are the ways that we do it. You know, and, and, and then you go into like, let's start with my story as a mirror, my story as a mirror for your story, and then you then through your story, Jay, and this is something you need to think about over the next day or two, what are the three main points? Like what are the three main takeaways, that you, ways that your identity helped shape you into the man that you are in corporate America, but now as the founder of a media company, and how can you relate those same three things to other people, right? So like for example, I'll just give you a practical example of what it looks like for me, and then I gotta jump to a meeting here in three minutes. But yeah. um, the, the, so for example, when somebody says like, how did your past play, like my cultural relevance is, I had this experience working for Mike Bloomberg, right, where communication was everything. I had to basically be able to very succinctly digest and simplify and synthesize a whole lot of information into really fast 30, 60, 90, 120 second messages. That was number one. Number two was an experience that I had in the Dominican Republic living and working in an orphanage on a human rights project where I had to hear and write about and fundraise for the most horrible stories you could ever imagine to the point where the last night that I was there, every single one of these 125 kids who have been raped and left for dead on the side of the street and tied to beds and beaten, every single one of them gave me a, a farewell gift thanking me for my contributions, which is where I, for the very first time at age 23, dedicated my life to serving Latino culture and Latino communities to you know, moving to San Francisco and starting a company, helping people share their story that ended up leading to me realizing, that, holy shit, a lot of people are really, really, really miserable and they have things that they wanna do, but they don't know how to start. That's kind of like the three things and I can extract a whole lot of messages around those things that have led me to do the work that I do in the US and in Latin America. So you have to figure out what are your three things and how can you turn them into like digestible, tips or digestible topics or digestible pillars that other people can think, what are my three things? And then how can I influence culture? And then I would close with something like this, which is, <clears throat> you know, I wanna close with this. And this is where I see on your sheet, you have to, a very specific call to action. The call to action is, how can I help you identify your cultural relevance, your story, and how can I come in and help you make sure that you're influencing your teams in the best way possible? That's what I do. Please let me know how I can help. This is, this is a big part of our offering and we're really proud of it. That's number one. And number two is, and by the way, the next time you guys need a speaker to share this message, please contact me even and especially if it's not Latino Heritage, Hispanic Heritage Month. Boom. Boom. That's it, brother. Okay. Well, thank you so much, brother. I'm going to commit pen to paper now and come back with another draft. You got um, it, man. Be in touch. Share that with you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, share that other draft with me, and then, and then we can uh, jam out of that one more time. Sounds good. All right. Proud of you, man. Peace. Thank you. Peace.